So, Eric, if you would describe what you're sitting in. Well, this is a uh, self-launching sailplane that I've built. It's uh, a sailplane is a airplane that's able to st uh, do pretty well with the motor off. It's got an eight horsepower electric motor. It's powered by lithium polymer batteries that I have in the wings, and they give me about a 3,000 foot climb, and then I can switch over to a solar sustain mode provided by the solar cells on the top of the wing, or shut off the motor, fold the prop, and just soar like a normal sailplane. So the aircraft can actually propel itself off the ground on battery power? Yep, it taxis and takes off like a normal airplane. And I understand that sometime in the 90s you actually flew this across the country. Yes, that's correct. It was with a different set of wings and nickel cadmium batteries. The motor was only two and a half horsepower at the time, so it was it was uh, underpowered at the time. But has the technology advanced a lot since then? Yes, it has. Um, the model airplane world is a good example. In the last 20 years, it's gone from the electric model airplanes barely being able to carry their own batteries to going straight up and going actually faster than the fastest gas models. In fact, they're even, by strange quirk, they're even faster than the jets now because the jets are limited in power and the electric motors are not limited by any regulation at this time for model airplanes. So as we scale it up, what are we looking forward to with uh, actual real airplanes? Well, uh, the problem right now is the range. We've certainly got the power. There's uh, electric motors that have uh, very good power to weight ratios and very efficient, but the uh, weak link is the batteries and um, they're coming along uh, like 30-40% improvement every year, I believe, in, in battery capacity and they're, uh, it's going to be start out with anything that doesn't have a large power requirement such as a uh, self-launching sailplane, uh, kind of long wing motor gliders and gradually evolving down to shorter and shorter wings and eventually, hopefully someday, anything will be powered by electricity and helicopters. Well, in the early stages, I guess we've seen Sunseeker. We've also seen um, Helios, and now on the horizon, there's Solar Impulse. Yes, uh, uh, balloonist uh, Bertrand Picard is planning to fly around the world in a solar-powered airplane, and um, it's similar to Helios, but I'm helping them with the design and construction, as a matter of fact. And what sorts of things are you uh, applying from your skill set to theirs? Um, I would say. Uh, harsh dose of reality to be honest with you because they just have it on paper and I have some uh, advice that's uh, more based on experience, not always good. For example, um, this airplane will actually uh, catch fire if it gets rained on, strangely enough. And <laughs> Waterproofing it is a huge ordeal and it'll never happen to this airplane, but uh, a real solar powered airplane is going to have to be waterproof. and. Uh, when you get over 60 volts DC, you get real problems with uh, intermittent connections, switches, circuit breakers, and especially water getting into any part of the electrical system. Is it a problem even with atmospheric moisture, like just clouds? Um, it, 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 the problem gets worse with altitude because air is a good insulator, and as you get higher, um, it's, you get less and less insulating effect, but um, no, I would say not. It's more that water is quickly, it contains ions and it's conductive. It's more, it's conductive enough that it basically shorts out solar cells and wires and batteries and just starts a fire almost right away. Well, you've been in this business and a, I think a pioneer in this business for a very long time. What do you see as the incremental steps as we go forward? What's coming next and then what's coming soon after that? How do you think it will progress in your crystal ball? What do you see? Well, I don't see any revolutionary steps unless, um, you know, there's uh, Mr. Fusion comes on the market and suddenly we have a little electric box that just provides unlimited electricity. Then it would take over immediately, but uh, short of that, it's going to just be uh, progressive steps, and strangely enough, it's the laptop computers and other small consumer electronics that are driving the battery technology right now. The best electric cars are actually being driven by little tiny laptop batteries. Um, 
and we know bigger batteries should be better, but nobody's developing them, um, not with any real motivation for a mass market. It just doesn't exist yet. So I don't see anything uh, earth shattering on the horizon, just lots of small steps. So what's the near goal for solar impulse? Um, to, it's a te technology demonstrator um, to demonstrate what's possible with the uh, very latest uh, in all the relevant technologies, the composite airframe, the brushless motor technology, the solar cells, and the storage batteries. To, it's, its goal is to keep a person up overnight, night after night. And in order to do that, you have to store the solar power on board the aircraft in efficient, lightweight batteries. And that has never been done. It's been done without a person on board the aircraft, but not with a person. Hmm. The storage capacity of the batteries on Sunseeker, uh, what, what sort of capacity does it have? How much power could it give you? I understand that the idea is more of a self-launching under battery power and then a solar sustain as you described to me before. That's correct. It, uh, it's about 15 minutes of uh, full throttle and then I can either switch to direct solar power if the sunlight's available or shut off the motor and recharge the batteries from the solar cells. And how long would a full recharge take? Um, again, it depends on the time of year and uh, other atmospheric you know, conditions, but uh, it's about um, 30, uh, 30 to 45 minutes. It's fully charged. And you've you've flown it. I, I take. What's the longest flight that the Sunseekers taken? Um, there were two flights of 254 miles within a mile, plus or minus a mile, uh, on the flight across the country. Was that? Uh pretty much all attributed to solar sustain power? No, that was all pretty much all attributed to thermal to thermal cross-country flying across the western deserts. But you had a trip out here, I understand, of more than 100 miles that was all solar powered? Uh, yes, from Tehachapi back to Ramona was direct solar. How long was the flight? I'm just curious. I believe it's 158 miles, right around there. And time-wise, what did it translate to? Um, it was under three and a half hours. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, it, 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 uh, when you, yeah, it, uh, I was staying between ten and fourteen thousand feet, and without just flying straight line, I actually was, yeah, I was doing close to fifty miles an hour. Well, you seem to me both a dreamer and a craftsman. If your dreams were to come true, what would be next? Um, I want to build a, uh, a practical two-seater with a proper tricycle landing gear that looks more like an airplane and beyond that then expand that to four seats just more like a you know two by two conventional seating and just keep working working up all the technologies there and and what we're really waiting for is lighter motors and and better batteries no the motors are plenty light it's oh. just the batteries just the batteries mm -hmm. just the storage that's it. Everything else is there.